Great. Hey, Brad, good to see you. Yeah. Cheers, hey, cheers. everybody. Cheers. <laughs> All right. We're going to have a good, good show today. We're going to be discussing FPB and uh, how we got into FPB. And we have really two good guests tonight. We got Greg Harley, uh, Harley FPB, and then we have Brian Gulina. Uh, and so without further ado, let me just go ahead and add him to the stream here. There we go, guys. Hey, welcome. 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 Brian. Hey, welcome, How guys. You doing? Oh, yeah. Cheers. 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 in the green room, so it's not as much as <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it looks, looks like I'm, there, there's definitely very good wine in this in this oh. live stream for sure greg greg cheers there cheers <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's get started with the first topic tonight how did we manage to get into fpb i know uh brad you got a lot of questions for the guests because you're you're recently just purchased the dji goggles so do you want to kick off with a few questions to our guests yeah, I, mean, I guess um, I, let me back up on that a little bit and say that um, I've had the Emacs Tiny Hawk 2 ready to fly kit for over a year. And uh, it all goes back to about the time when Greg and I met back in Dillon, Colorado at the uh, spin down last year. We um, they were flying a lot of uh, small drones, big drones out there, and I was getting kind of an itch to fly. So I decided to go ahead and order that kit. And before I even left Colorado and it was here. Uh, when I got back to Virginia, Richmond, Virginia. So um, just a quick thing on that, I, I charged up the batteries. I bought some, like five extra batteries in, in the living room and lifted it off and scared the crap out of the cats and put it back in the box. And that's, a, that's, the, last, that's the last time I've flown that thing. It's been a year. So I haven't, I haven't had much of a, a real big itch to fly FTB. I like watching other people fly, and I like doing ride-alongs. So I bought... Um, before I went to Dillon, right before that, Ken Herring, of uh, you know, the Thursday Night Live, Ken Herring, I don't know, Brian, I don't know if you know who he is, but um, he has live show every week. He's on like his 204th show, a 10th show, I don't know what it is. He's been doing it for years. But he had a pair of fat sharks, and um, I wanted to be able to do ride along, so I bought those from him. And took them to Dylan and did a couple of ride alongs with some of the guys, but you know, I wanted that digital. Mm -hmm. So all the past year I've been just wanting, wanting to get into digital and DJI put out that, you know, that digital uh, version two goggles. And um, so I just didn't want to spend the money on those. So anyway, recently I was able to acquire a pair of those V2 goggles from DJI and was able to do ride alongs there at spin up. And then also what I did was I bought a module from one of the guys there, which he's in our chat, Third Eye View. And um, I bought those from him to add to these goggles to be able to add the module for analog. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine both analog and digital in the same goggles. So that's where I'm at. Um, I don't really have a lot of desire yet to build a drone. Now Al's been pushing me a little bit on that and some of the other guys and, you know, I, I don't mind the pushing, but I'm just kind of real hesitant right now. I'm a camera drone guy. So anyway, I'll stop at that. Um, I've taken too much time explaining all that. <laughs> so, no, no, no. You're good, stop. man. And that's where I'm at. So the questions will come as as we're talking. I'll have a few questions. OK, well, that that's interesting. Well, I, I know both of you guys stories, Greg and Brian's story. He wants to go first of, of, of you guys to. Tell us all how you got into FPV. I'll let Brian go first. <laughs> okay. So this is you know, almost, it almost, you know, we have the alcohol. It's, it's starting off like an AA meeting. Uh, hello, my name's Brian, and I fly drones. And then everybody goes, hello, Brian. And then we keep moving. Hello, Brian. <clears throat> there we go. So I started... Wow, 2013, and it started with, I was on this really, you know, pro hot project, IT project, and, you know, one of the propeller heads, literally, um, you know, a developer, he's got this chip, you know, a circuit board, and I'm, I'm like, oh, look, PWM connectors on the side. I'm like, what's that? And I'm, you know, oh I'm looking gosh. at it. Oh, my gosh. I'm like, wait, that's the six degrees of freedom, you know? And he goes, oh, it's a, 
what's it called? A uh, uh, open open TX. Yes, the open open with the CC three D uh, flight controllers from from way back, and uh, it, it you know it was like the, the gateway. It was like my first crack hit. Not that I've ever had crack. Let's just cover that right now. <laughs> no, you used the right you used the right word. <laughs> well, so so chemically speaking, there was something in my brain that said, "Oh, wow, that feels so good." <laughs> and then from there, it's like, "Well, how do I learn how this works?" And you know, somewhere in the back here, there's like big Frankenstein 500 size drones, and it doesn't take too many of those to crash. Where you're kind of like, mm, "Maybe this isn't a good addiction." <laughs> and, then, and then you do, you do more research, and then you, you find like a you know something more of a, a five inch, the classic five inch, and and, right. and just for you know the people who are shy of putting them together, in the digital era they're a lot more simple, it's it's less frustration. There, there seems to be like a straighter series of connected dots, whereas before, you know. You, you you spend hours building one and you set it on fire on the bench. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's, there's you know all that. So and and since then you know we've left from the, the you know the CC3Ds up to Libra Pilot and then um, getting into you know Beta Flight and Kiss and but it's it's basically my my hit of adrenaline like every Saturday Sunday charge up you know. Me a couple to my wife because all these things I'm supposed to do, but I'm out of here. Bye. <clears throat> and then deal with the grief when I get home. There's not a lot of grief. She's very angry about it. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I must tell you guys that Brian does tremendous amount of 3D printing, and uh, he's done tremendous amount of 3D printing for uh, me. So um, all nice. this, uh, the peanut stuff that mounts on and everything, but. He's he's built a complete 3D printed. What was that tractor? Oh my gosh, that thing was amazing. The one you pulled out. There's skid loaders and there's like track tanks and it's just I'm you get to locked see indoors. That. You get locked indoors with the COVID and you're like, well, I'm gonna sit here and work. I might as well do something <laughs> on the bicycle. And then sometimes you're trying to get too ambitious. So. But the, yep, the, so the 3D there. printer is big, because not only do I like to like you know build them, it's always trying to innovate and design. Like how can you slam it further and further? Because it's all about wind resistance and aerodynamics. So it's easier to 3D print <laughs> something, crash it, print another one, away you go. So enough about me, Greg. <laughs> tell us, <laughs> welcome, welcome to the AA meeting. <laughs> hey, everybody say hi, Greg. Hi, my name is Greg, and I'm addicted to FPV. <laughs> hi, Greg. Hey, welcome, Greg. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> hey, this could be a new theme for the show, right? <laughs> yeah. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. That's right. Yeah. Social. Hey, it started out with me about a year ago with a camera drone. Snapped in. Oh, the snap tame thing? Oh my gosh, mine is brick, man. I can't get it to fly. Snap tame. Oh, okay. Five hundred. Oh, yeah. oh, that one. I. Okay, yeah. That that was like a hundred bucks or something like that, wasn't it, Greg? Or was it more than that? And then it just hey, my first FPV was the uh, tiny hop two. I got that little setup, but I was scared to fly it. For a while, had, so I went to uh, you spin down. Dylan. You went to spin down in Dylan, right? I remember you having that there. Yeah, that's when I did that ride along with Doc. And yep. once I got back home, it was Doc, gone. Yeah, Doc, <laughs> Doc is very addictive when you do ride alongs with him. <laughs> and I've been buying them ever since. <laughs> <laughs> and breaking and fixing them, as we like to talk about that, Brian. <laughs> mm -hmm. I save all the broken ones. I save all the broken ones for winter. I just get me another one. <laughs> hey, the addiction is real, man. Oh, it it, it is. The addiction is real. Yeah, that's hey, what I'm afraid. That's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> be afraid, Brian. I'm but, very afraid. <laughs> hey, you that's, why I, that's why I come to these. Uh, uh, 
triple, what is it, double A meetings, triple A FBP meetings. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Again. So, hey, Emacs has got, they came, I know you, since you, every, we all on YouTube now, hey, they came out with the Tiny Hawk 3 little setup. Oh, and wow. That, just stop right there, man, to you. I'm going to look it up and maybe I can share it on Oh, the I screen. haven't even seen that. I just went it's to Emacs' so, website. Yes. Kelly did a review on it. I think Kelly's review dropped first. Okay. Oh my gosh, really? Oh, here yeah, it is. Right. I see it. The Tiny Hawk 3 FPV racing drone, right? Yep. Hey, yeah. and and the uh, the goggles, right? They turn in, it's, they like magnetized to the, the monitor is like magnetized to the goggles. So, right, once you separate that, you can use that to do ride-alongs with anybody else it's like that oh. little monitor dock head okay but it, yeah, yeah. It, it snaps to uh uh like a goggle frame cool. yeah that is fantastic that is good to hear i'm desperately trying to pull up emax's web page but i'm not yeah, doing I got so it. well yeah i got it up and running right now you want to share it and talk through it I'll be... um yeah i'm just looking at it just like live with you guys but i'll share right now let me share that screen and you should be seeing that any second all right i'll see it i'll go ahead hey. and add it to the stream there it is 288 oh 300 bucks um what do you get in it <clears throat> yeah it looks like um you get the the headset there if you can see that uh, that's what uh greg was talking about it looks like that monitor pulls off of the front of that is what you're saying greg yeah, yeah it looks hey brian is that diversity antennas on top that's what it looks like. Let's look at this a little closer. We got, oh, look at that. Isn't that cool? Oh, so my gosh. You can pull the monitor off. And uh, let me see if I can go big with this. Ah, there we go. Look at that. That's pretty cool right there. And look, you can use it on the controller. Um, you can use it with the goggles. You can do it on a tripod. That's pretty cool right there. Oh, wow. They're, they're definitely uh, uh, thinking out of the box there for sure. Looks like you got all these little parts. Look, it looks like the goggles move in and out to adjust for different eye strengths. I guess for yeah um, readers, probably more than likely, and maybe even accommodate a pair of glasses if you got prescription glasses. Let's see. Nice little kit there, actually. Um, nice controller. You got ducted. Uh, got the tiny. Looks like Tiny Hawk Two, but. Apparently that's a newer version of that now. Nice case. Oh, I like the way they put the Velcro straps in the case. The case I have for the Tiny Hawk 2 is horrible. You open it up and everything falls out of it. Oh, wow. That is nice. I really like the way that thing looks. Ooh. So, yeah, nice marketing. Cool. I like the whole idea of being able to pull that monitor off of there the um, and being able to put it on the tripod or, you know, just yep. uh, on the yep. controller. There you go. There's a better view of the goggles. Looks like it'll accommodate some uh, uh, prescription glasses. Hey, it's got a, um, it comes with a, uh, go back to the controller. Going backwards here. <laughs> and so it looks like that's, I haven't gotten to a single picture with the controller. Maybe that's up forward. All right, it's check still, it out, right? It's got a little thing that clips in the top. Yeah. That's all right. Oh, yeah. It's got like a little thing that clips in the top that that monitor screws to. Oh, so I see it. It's, it. That's that's a GoPro connection. Hey, so you could fly like a camera drone yeah. or FPV. Yeah, that's cool. I like that idea. There you go, Brad. Yeah, well, I, already, I got to get rid of the two now. <laughs> <laughs> it, it'll break. Hey. It, it's going to break soon enough. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing I know one thing about that um, Emacs goggles that came with the Tiny Hawk too. I can't use those at all. I wear readers. Don't wear prescription. I wear readers, and um, I, I've tried tried using those things. But I have the Fat Sharks, and now I have the adapter for my V2 goggles to be able to use those, and I can use those. So anyway, that that's that was it. Oh, you stopped sharing the screen already. All right. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, no, no sorry. I think I lost it. Oh, no, no there it is. I, I got it. Um, let me. We can I don't show know. The... I, don't, I, I lost it, so I'm going to remove it. Maybe you can add it again. Oh, there ah, it is. There it is. Okay. So there, there's uh, the controller by itself. Pretty interesting how it's got those uh, 
game control pa type pads down below. That's for the trim. That was for the trim, yeah. Uh. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. Pretty hey, nice. you guys should start seeing. Everybody's going to be doing a review on it now. But uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think Kelly's hit the hit you two first. Okay. No, but I didn't Good. see that drop today. Okay. I'm going to remove this, guys, and uh, we'll continue okay. on. Yeah. So, Greg, you were telling me, uh, sorry, I've shifted everybody around. We're going to be doing musical <laughs> chairs. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cheers, cheers. All right. So, so that's how you your path to FPB was uh, through um, Doc Murdoch, right? That's what I heard you say at Spin Down? Yeah, it was right. I met Doc the night before Spin Down. And uh, I used to go by a drone biker at first. And I pulled up on him on my Harley, man. I guess I uh, might have impressed him with something. He might have didn't like the way that, I don't know. I didn't like it. It, it. it was cool. But then he suggested Harley FPV, and I'm like, hmm. I'm like, that kind of rolls. Yep. Rolls That's right cool. off your tongue. He's like, if I was you, I'd take it. He, he, you know, he looked up <laughs> online. He's like, go home and uh, get your Instagram and YouTube. Change it. Not just change it on my YouTube if you watch one of my videos. Bob gave me that one. And that's that a, good, with it, that a good one. Yeah, that's a good name. I like it. I love it. I think it's, it's, not, a good it's one. not just because I have a Harley as well, but <laughs> I, that's how I load my Harley, my bike down with all my bike, uh, with all my quads. I mean, that's how I go flying. Hey, it looks like we just got um, a few more people in the house. Mm -hmm. Looks like uh, Mark Fisher just joined. Hey, Mark, thanks for joining. We um, let's see. We didn't we didn't say hello. I don't think unless somebody did, and I didn't hear it. We got Chris Sunrise Sun Sunrise Water Media. I need another glass of wine. Um, <laughs> we have um, Mike from Fly Zone Drones, and who else? Let me scroll back up. Um, we got oh, we got Marcus in the house, Idaho Quadcopter. Welcome, sir. And so right I think now, it everybody, covers everybody. Everybody is cranking and trying to see Greg. <laughs> hey, um, my name is Al Duran, and I'm addicted to FPBN. Uh, thanks here for letting me join the the, the group meeting today. <laughs> um, I got into um, FPBN because I bought a twenty dollar little drone, and I got addicted to flying. And then I got the Get Bar C Tiny Go. <laughs> And um, it was Brian named it the gateway drug to FPV. And I made a video because it's called the gateway drug to FPV at the tiny go. And it, it I watched, really, I watched that one. <laughs> it really is very addictive. As a matter of fact, I burned four batteries today, Brian, right down, down the street. Uh, around 10 o'clock this morning, I was out flying and it was weird because the sun was in a different location that we normally fly at. <laughs> now, with that said, now with that said, I'm going to play a video of a last weekend. Brian and I were at the place we'd like to fly is our, the property of one of our friends, Keith, and. Uh, I was just enjoying the really nice colors and flying around. Next thing I hear Brian say, I'm on your sixes. And I'm like, okay. And I slowly just started cruising around. And here's the video from that. Yeah. Let me go so ahead. The, the, I, photographic evidence of him trying to kill my drone. I just want to be on record for this. <laughs> it, it is. I might have to restart it because I... Uh, all right, let me. All right, sit. Two different cameras. Here comes a wreck. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I mean, man, look at a prop right in his face, man. <laughs> nice. 
That was a nice recovery. Yeah, and I'll speed forward. This is actually meant for YouTube. Is that it wasn't meant for today? So let's see. And I was like, oh, okay. So, and so um, and I, I think I'm describing what's going on. I'm, let me just uh, skip the talking head here. Here's Brian taking off, and I'll let Brian describe it from here if you want, Brian. Oh, sure. No cue. Okay. Well, we'll just put me on the spot. Okay. So <laughs> I did that a lot, man. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> but look at this camera. This is the, what, the Polar? Yeah, uh, this is the Polar Pro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's really good at twilight flying. I would describe it as a little oversaturated on color, but you know, not to be a snob and just enjoy it. It's, this is, you know, basically a Sunday afternoon of somebody who probably should have been labeled with ADD flying around looking at, you know, oh, look, a leaf. Oh, look, another leaf. <laughs> and, and then continuing to go. And then, and now since, you know, I switched to, you know, digital, every now and then I'll just look up and go, wow, look at the sunset. Oh, that's pretty. <laughs> and of course, I'm up there for an extended period of time on the left side, and it just kind of dawns on me like, hey, fuel is not infinite, and I don't really know what's below me. Yeah. So I, I'll just swing around and then shoot down, and then in classic hunter style, there's a target below me. I'm going to just pull up at a six and see what he's doing. <laughs> And at that point, it just turns into a cat and mouse. So I'm, and so I'm sitting right beside him as we're flying, and I'm just calling out, "Look, I'm on your six. And and normally in you know, you know, proper full size <laughs> aircraft, that that cue is, don't do anything, bless you, don't do anything squirrely because I'm going to crash into you and run over you. <laughs> bless you. <laughs> so Brian, I've been by your Al's taken me by your property a couple of times just riding by. That's a pretty cool place y'all have to fly there. Yeah, it's kind of like a big uh, playground for the drones. Yeah. Hey, I would love that spot. Yeah. All the well, trees the fly down low. Pop up. Yeah. You, can, you can go low and high when you're really yep. when you want to hone your skills. What you do is you find little holes through the tree canopy, yep. and you try to fly through and thread the needle. Boom. Yeah, but you know, we inadvertently created a comparison video by just running the track, right? Because now we can see the right differences there. between I'm, the camera. Trying to kill me. I have it on. <laughs> hey, trying to make that first gap. <laughs> you hook, man. Next thing you know, you got you another quad coming in the middle. Here's a slow mo, Brian. Here we go. We live it. See? <laughs> and there should have been a, like a microphone beside us because when he did, he was like, there, take that. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a prop in your face again, man. That prop just came right up in there. But. So that's, yeah, a, that's a good example of. I would call it a low impact mid-air collision because the worst scenario, and, and Al and I have actually done it, is you're going around a track in the opposite direction and you are full forward and then you happen to notice something coming straight at you. Too late. A lot of damage. <laughs> Too late. Yeah. But, yeah, but when you're doing it together at the same speed, your net speed is very low. So there's very little risk of damage. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. if you're going in both at the opposite directions towards each other, if you see the other person, <laughs> it's, it's way too late. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, you just get your little dustbin and you pick your parts up and go home. Well, yeah. I like to ask the, the guys, uh, what camera looks the best? I really slowed it down here in slow motion. Here's what the cameras look like, side-by-side -side comparison, almost. I'm right you know, behind it's, Brian. It's kind of hard to, you know, I mean, it depends on what you like. I mean, on the left side, the, the Vista Polar Pro has some dark, like got more darker, color. rich colors. <coughs> and the, the other one, the Air Unit Nebula Pro camera, I mean, it's, I don't know. It looks I more natural. It's more natural. I would like something kind of in between the two of those if I was going to be picky. 
What's the you book? know, something what a little bit more natural, like to the right, probably leaning towards the right more than the left. So the two cameras are two different tools or instruments in the sense that, you know, one is really for twilight flying because it's trying to like oversaturate and extend the light with a fixed uh, frame rate. Whereas the other one is a lot more dynamic, which, you know, a good daytime adaptive type of flyer with a, a much lower uh, latency rate on your feedback. It looks like yeah. the, the, it brings in more light. The, uh, Nebula, <laughs> the Nebula Pro camera looks like it brings in light a little bit better if, I, if I'm looking at it correctly. Oh, it yeah, could be. Light condition. But yeah, so, you know, that's what I wanted to get the feedback from you guys. Let us know which one looks better. But I'll go ahead and stop the video. That's uh, enough. Well, Alan, if I come out that, that way, man, you're going to have to take me to that spot. I'll stop the <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> <clears throat> it's private property, so we can do it, do it anytime we want. Yeah, you know what I mean? Um, I, do, I do want to add that um, I am a big HDR kind of person, so I do like the rich colors, but sometimes too rich is too much. Yeah, it, it gets a little, it's like it's a too intense and just yeah. over stimulates. Yeah, it's not that, it's like you said earlier, it's not, it's, the other one was more natural colors as opposed to the more HDR look on the, um, you know, on the so other side. So one thing that I do is the plane that we're flying, Al and I, it is, has a polar. What I will do is I will buy multiple copies of the exact same gear and then just change the, the camera out. And then so not to, you know, use guns as an analogy, but it's not a bad one. And that is, is that I will have several planes that are identical and they will only vary by one component. And it depends on what situation I'm in. So if I'm doing a twilight flying, I'm gonna do a polar. If I'm doing a daytime, I'm doing a straight up, out of the box, you know, air unit or a Vista. And it's just, it's just different things for whatever the situation is. It, you, you could argue it's a little OCD to have so many planes sitting around that are identical except for one parameter, but it's kind of like, Right. You need that one thing for that situation because most of these things are compromises, and it's trying to get the right kiss. My to turn it all the way down. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense if you're able to if you're able to do that, have multiple configurations, and even just ever so minor configurations, like you're talking so, about. And, and you can you can change by side too because you know a five inch. It's a big, heavy beast, and and you know the four S, six S, you're clocking right. a lot of torque. But if you go down to like a, a three inch or a four inch, it, it it tends to change the way you fly. So if you're doing a little more AP type situation, you don't you're not going to want the high torque. You're not going to want you know these massive acceleration rips. You're going to want something very calm, longevity, right. just to get as much film in the cam. It looks like in your on your property there and, and some of that footage helped me understand it better than when I've just ridden by there. But it looks like you could rip through there quite a bit, but it's it's uh, so much you can do as far as speed, I would think, because it's such a if for a drone. That's a short piece of property. So I would assume you can't get up it so fast. So you will so on the major the main clip on that thing, you'll see there's basically a D loop as if it was a NASCAR track. Mm hmm. And you can get down to doing like an, an eight second loop. We, we've timed it. We can get down to eight seconds. And it, and it is oh, wow. nothing. It is just a blur. And you're tearing through and you can melt the battery down in about a minute. Because you're just, you're just fully, you know, canted into it. <laughs> There is no vertical component whatsoever. You're, you're just. No. <laughs> and what? Sector. Well, Kyle, the other gentleman that likes to uh, the need for speed, man, he has smashed into that telephone pole so many times. <laughs> Last time he was there, he just destroyed his uh, his camera. Uh, so he had to get a new camera. But Kyle builds a lot of drones, so he probably has, what do you think, about six, seven right now running? Um, He's doing the same thing I am doing in the sense that we're, we're picking our own components, we're building our own gear. I started, uh, what, 2014, he started in 2015, because he saw me do that, 
And this is why you don't do drugs near your kids, because you know he saw me doing it. Oh man, I got to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, right. So to be fair, and not to play the old guy, you know, card is it was so long ago, there was nobody doing it around me. So I was, you know, doing a lot of R and D on my own, and, and the rule was with him was, look, if you want to do this, I'll show you the okay. process. I'll show you how to build one, but you can't use any of the gear I'm using. Because if you're using the same gear I'm using, I'm trapped in this little envelope of what, only what I know. I want to yeah. know how you're going to be successful, and then we're going to steal each other's stuff. Great <laughs> idea. Yeah. And, and it, it, worked, it worked really well because we, we are trying to solve technical problems, but when you make that agreement, you double your search surface. And you find better sense. products, that makes you find sense. better techniques. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Well, and it actually it moved onto the bench too because the tools we were using, I was using a big old clunky Weller just because you know classic <laughs> mirror, and then you know a new kid shows up with this you know hot new thing, and the it, TS one hundred, it should you know it gets to three hundred and fifty degrees in fifteen seconds, and I'm like, oh, I gotta have that. Oh wow. Mm. It, it's so nice too Not because you could use your regular battery. I got it too. Yeah, <laughs> great guy. Yeah, it's a TS one hundred. I mean, it's it's yeah. it's far cheaper than a commercial bench iron, and I gotta argue, it's far more useful for this scale. These are very small white parts. Just yeah, to, great. To whip out something that's the size of like. I don't know, a Sharpie marker. It just doesn't make sense. Our stuff is very delicate. Yeah, I'm so trying that, to think. Here's mine. Is but, that thing, is it cordless or, or not? No, it, yeah, so it can it, be. With so the battery. It, oh, with the battery. It has okay. a standard inline, and you can just get your normal wall adapter. Okay. And here, we're going to do a product demo. Look. Let's see how it gets. <laughs> I just told you, it says, hey, press the button, stupid. Yeah. And then you, you can actually count seconds here. And that's how fast you get to 360. Good grief. Wow. Well, he's got a set of 338. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, them, them YouTube influencers that get you every time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know, man. I know. And here's one of the other things I've been using a lot here, man. Check this little screwdriver out. Oh, man. hey, hey, Al. <laughs> hey, Al. And you know why? Because Brian told me to get one. <laughs> hey, yeah, I'm sorry. looking for one of those. Uh, ain't that a little electric light thingy? Yeah. 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 Oh, well, yeah. if I get it to focus right next to my face. <laughs> sorry, yeah, Brad, so what you were saying? No, go ahead. When you bounce back out, I'll show you. Okay, okay, I'll bounce it out. Okay, okay, bounce it out. So, what do you got? <laughs> oh, you bought the screwdriver, man. That thing is awesome screwdriver, man. I hey, bought the screwdriver it? under your recommendation. Hey, where did y'all get that at? at Amazon? A Amazon. Amazon. I got to I gotta blame, blame it on Brian. He started it. I want to do that shit to <laughs> It's Brian's right? fault, man. <laughs> Do we know what that is? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We know what 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 is this smoke preventer or whatever. <laughs> so it's a it's a smoke stopper stopper, and what it does is you plug the battery oh. into this before you plug it into your freshly built drone. Oh. And it will, it will only provide power if there's no short. If it oh. sees a short, there's a green light on there. If it sees a short, it'll turn off. And it won't burn your drone down on the bench. Uh -huh. Yeah, so Al's got the more versatile uh, XT60 and XT30, and it's got a little a green LED in the center there. And it stops you, and, and just wow. from personal experience, if I was a smarter person, I would figure this stuff up before I need wow. it. But I actually burn drones on the bench just because mm -hmm. one of the wires will be reversed. And then yes. you just smoke, smoke and catch it. fire. And then you have your wife going, now you shouldn't be doing that in the house. And then, you know, you're, you're in the shed there for a few months. No kidding. In the doghouse. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'm going to put the link in the uh, description below for the screwdriver, guys. I'll go ahead and find it for yeah. you all. You guys carry on while I'm looking. Hey, Al, I've already got it. I've got it up. 
Oh, you do. Well, yeah, I'll go. put it. I'll put it in the chat. Hey, Thank is you, it the wild stick? The wild no, stick. that one's not. I didn't get the wild stick because that was like fifty dollars. Thirty-five. Yeah, so this one. Do? This one. This one's about thirty dollars, but they have ten percent off on Amazon right now. Um, I'm gonna put it in the chat. And I'll tell you guys, Brad can do some comparative shopping, man. This cool. guy <laughs> is good. I, I, I think he's going to rival my wife, man. My wife's really good. She's frugal. She knows how to do all that stuff. So thanks, Brad, think... for pointing that. I'll go ahead and... and uh... Oh, look at that. Hey, so, um, and then, so what you guys were just talking about, um, that uh, smoke stopper, that was what, the XT30 slash 60, right? That's the one yeah, I that's have. the one I have. Yeah, that's okay, the one I, I have. One. I'm going to put that in the chat next. So everybody listening in the chat, this will be the next thing. If somebody's interested in that, that's yeah. on in Amazon as well. That's like $11. So Al has, Al's from the British neighborhood. I can only afford oh. the <laughs> 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 All right. We can hear you there, Harley. <laughs> <laughs> we hear your thoughts coming out of your head <laughs> all right so that's my story to FPB I think we covered everybody's stories uh, our AA meeting is almost complete here <laughs> we're going to move on to the next hey but let me hang on a second what really got me into it I, uh, when I was in the military I was aviation ordinance I was air crewman on P3s so Oh, nice! My the P3s, the electronic air. jammers. Huh? Yeah, those were the electronic jammers, right? The P3s. Yeah. Uh, no, they was like the sub chasers. We call those. Oh, bubble, oh, oh, that's right. Chasers. That's right. The bubble station. Gotcha. So I was like the AF observer. So you know, I used to spend hours just looking out into At, the, to the sea. So, <laughs> the sky, in the clouds. I had my before I had. As soon as I found. Got to learn how to fly one of them FPV drones, and I saw that. Once I saw Doc Sting, and that brought it right back, man. Boom. And I've been hooked ever since. <laughs> Brian, you were saying? Well, so first, Greg, thank you for your service. Yep. Secondly, thank you. I, I had a pilot's license before I had a driver's license. And I also have adrenaline issues. People know me. They like, hey, what's going on? Cool my ear. Watch this. Uh, but the FPV for me was like it's an adrenaline kick, but there's no risk to your person. I mean, as long as you don't do stupid things like leave the props on while it's on the bench. And so it's a you know it's a nice you know for for my age of life, it's a it's a great way to get an adrenaline kick and not worry about killing myself. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Minimal, minimal damage to uh, <laughs> other folks. <laughs> hey, well, so yeah, so maybe if uh, if we want, we can move on to maybe a little discussion on spin up. Sure. I mean, um, the topic is how does spin up influence the drone community? Obviously, Greg spoke about you know how Greg um, was flying with Doc Murdoch and he showed him. You know, do the rod rod along on the goggles, and ever since then, he, you've been hooked with it. So it definitely had a huge influence on you, Greg. Right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, so that's the topic of our conversation next, guys. So feel free to start jumping in and give us some comments how it's affected you guys and how it's affected the community. With that said, I'm going to add a video to the stream, and here it is. Hey, Al, you still got a thing up at the bottom of the screen. Yep, let me remove that thing, whatever it is. Show. It's an affiliate link. You have to pay the rent. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that ain't cheap. There you go. Hey, there's all the geeks with cameras, and yep. look at them all. This look is kind it. of a lunch lunchtime thing. Everybody stepped outside to fly and socialize and. Have See, a good that, time. Guy, that guy had a drone. It was just missing the propellers. He had to hold it in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's right. They even sell the gimbal to hold your... your uh... So most of the folks in the chat know where we're at. This is uh, Cedar Park, Texas, right outside of Austin, Texas. So we were at the Cedar Park Recreational Center, I guess it was. 
And this is Greg's gear right there. And yeah. Michael right on the left, Johnny on the left. And this, uh, is the, and this is out at the AMA field we went to on Sunday, the day after spin up. And it's a serious field there, Brian. All that behind there is charging stations. So you could fly and just charge yeah. while you're flying. And this is the newbie flyer right there. And uh, this is uh, Greg's uh, and my. And this is actually an a shot of all the drones that were flying over the lake that evening. Cedar after. Park, yeah, right yeah. in Cedar Park. So it was a good time. <clears throat> there's the Motley crew to stay late. <laughs> <laughs> and so there it is, guys. I'll go ahead and remove it uh, and go back to this shot here. Seems like so it was how, so long ago, but we just got back from there. Yeah, I mean, how, how has these meetings influence you i mean i'm the freshman class this is my first time i ever met went to one of those meetings maybe it's the people that you meet oh yeah, yeah. i agree I mean, everybody's like on the same page i guess flying drones well we all the commonality we all have is drones regardless yeah. if it's fpv camera whatever i mean ever and we even had a new one there the b copter that ken heron brought that just has two props on it which was pretty weird to see how it flies that was a pretty cool device but yeah i think the commonality is the drones and then uh, that i think for everybody for the most part it's about the social aspect of it mm -hmm. yeah so chicken and egg thing because through the social you learn more Right. Strengthen or deepens your appreciation. True. And then what Al, what you're bringing up about this, what was the in, kind of the influence? What what influences you when you go to these things? A con, we, I guess you could call them a conference and an event, a meetup, whatever you want to call it. It's um, it, I've been to all four of the spin ups. So and last year was virtual. So it was only like about 10 of us at it. Um, it was on YouTube live but virtual but anyway four years into that it's just always about the social side of it but the influence side of it to me is is uh the new tech that everybody talks about the new like the mavic 3 came out this year hey i'm only for the prices man i only went for the prizes <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a three thousand dollar drone giveaway i was oh, like uh, i'll pay a hundred bucks for that no sorry to interrupt brad go ahead no, i was no, just it's joking good. Nope, our buddy, our buddy Captain Ray Kelly's in the chat right now. He's the one oh, that that's Mavic right. 3. He won the draw. He won the Mavic Three, and I mean, he was he was beside himself when he won that. I, I, I don't think he had any words there for a few seconds, but um, you can't keep Ray from talking, so he had some words after that. But <laughs> <laughs> Ray, congrats again. Everybody's been saying, and you're, a, and I said this, and I mean this with love, but you were a lucky bastard. <laughs> Hit three grand in his pocket free yeah it only cost him a thousand bucks uh what, what did it cost for a ticket 110 bucks uh, for a ticket yeah no i don't know oh, no to go to the spin up it was only yeah. 100, 100, 100 and some dollars depending on when you purchased it yeah and i you know i had a battle for my prize i had a battle uh who, <laughs> who did I, oh i had a battle ken on those stupid little drone bots and <laughs> <laughs> and, and and I took two hits, he took two hits, and then it took so long, and then he finally had mercy and said, all right, you guys keep them both. <laughs> yeah, Kelly, Kelly just said, yeah, y'all can both win, win on that. He's always good like that. He, he doesn't like to see anybody go away empty-handed. Yeah, yeah, I know. He's such a nice guy. Aaron, huge influence. Um, in the community no doubt and obviously letting everybody play with the mavic 3 uh, before anybody else uh, had it in their hands was uh, an amazing experience uh, i think not too busy yeah. trying to fly fpv well yeah. brad got to fly it at uh <clears throat> right at the penny backer right, right right before spin up we uh we went down for was that on saturday morning yeah saturday morning mm -hmm. We went down to Pennybacker Bridge in the mm -hmm. fog, and uh, Kelly brought out the Mavic 3, and it had already been announced. He did, just hadn't been to the spin-up yet, but he asked me if I wanted to fly it or if anybody wanted to fly it, and I grabbed the remote right out of his hand. <laughs> <laughs> I, sent it, I, I sent it through the cloud all the way up above the fog, which was only about, 
what was it, Al? Maybe 200 feet? I don't remember. It wasn't even yeah. that. I, Maybe I, I two. Know. But once you got above that, that, that fog, it was beautiful. Looking towards the sunrise and Austin, we could see the Austin sights. I wish I had a picture. Well, actually, I do have pictures. Um, oh, oh, rear oh, oh, there you go. The only thing I'm not a big fan of is actually the the um, battery. Oh, um, it may be, maybe, but a couple Sorry, times guys. I've had an error. I got this thing. It says your batteries. Stuck. It's enough to power it up, but it's not enough to to actually to get the communication. Uh, try the on off button. Uh, you want to record? Yeah, yeah, you can do it. I think I have the one. It's like it froze now. Yeah, it, it does. It, I'm sorry about that, guys. I'm having technical difficulties trying to get the audio to stop and all that jazz. So <laughs> let me let me do something here, and then I'll hide it. Yay! Now now I figured it out. Now, so just just while he's queuing up here, the he's amount forget. of stuff you have to master technically to fly a drone, amazingly complicated. Queuing the video. <sighs> Okay, no more wine for you. I am, <laughs> I am froze. I'm stuck. I don't know how to get. Oh, here we go. Finally, there. The lag is over. I have frozen, and I cannot get unfrozen. Cheers. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. It. Um, sorry about that, guys. I hope it's even bigger next year, man. I oh, think yeah. so too, but. Hey. Brad, you were saying about this this shot here. Maybe I can yeah. play it. Maybe this is one of the shots. I only have a couple of them, but this it just it was a beautiful Ooh. sight to see, and that was the that was the Mavic Three when I was just playing around with it, testing with it, and took a few shots. Kelly sent these back to me um, later on, but um, it's it it did a nice job. But when we it was the funny thing was when we brought the drone back down through the fog, it was completely covered in moisture from all the moisture in the fog but um didn't didn't hurt it we weren't up in it very long we, we got through it and back down yeah yeah it was amazing um amazing for sure um <clears throat> let's see what else is going on what is people saying in the chat anybody been keeping up with the chat i've been trying to watch it um it looks like we got mr jrc in the house oh, nice good good so glad to have everybody here. Appreciate Greg, did you? Sharing. I have to. I have to ask Greg. You got a bag in a delivery in? Was that FPV parts? Yep. <laughs> Hang on, I, I introduce y'all to my next little project. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh oh. Let's see. Hey, <laughs> matter of fact, it's that thing that they was uh that Kent, uh, Dobo and uh Ed Ricker. Yep. Oh, right? okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, you building a. Syndrome fit. Octocopter. Oh, oh nice. building one of those. Oh, look at this. You got the, oh, you got the frame for the octocopter. Hey, I'm thinking about, I kind of want to do it live. Like, I ain't, I'm not going to build the whole thing live because I can't, I can't get all the parts. Yeah, I got the motors coming. I got the ESCs coming. You know, what, Greg, you know what you could do like Kai does, Lone Star. <laughs> he does like the live at the workbench kind of thing where you put the camera up overhead and do your live stream putting it together piece by piece. Yeah, I'll, but I won't call it uh, on the workshop. I, I get a, some other kind of name. I'll, I think I'm going to do that. That's why I'm waiting to get enough parts to at least fill up an hour or something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That would be cool to see. I'd like to see. But that. I got all my 3D printed. Everything for it. Nice, very nice. Oh, I want to I want to step backwards just a little bit on our previous conversation, Brian. You, uh, Al, and y'all were talking about the three D printing stuff. I have three three D printers. One of them's are been sold. Um, I think Al was wanting to maybe possibly dabble in that one, but mm -hmm. <laughs> I already have that one sold. But <laughs> no. I have three, uh, two three D printers in my name right now: Artillery Sidewinder X two. And also uh, Creality Ender 3 V2. I've got that. Okay. And, yeah. and, and, and so I actually, <laughs> I actually built my own printer to start with. Nice. a couple of years ago. And, and anybody who's watching this, please don't do that. It's a really stupid idea. <laughs> <laughs> I almost wanted better. to do that. Well, so, and, and I was like, 
Well, you know, I can program. I can program Arduinos. I'll just build one. You know, like, you, you moron. Don't do that. <laughs> but I think well, it's going like, to be like the tune part that's going to be the hardest. hardest yeah, part. Of it. Tuning it, yeah, getting it tuned out. Yeah. Well, and, and then, well, you know, I'm a, whole, I'm a tinker. I'm a tinker like you are, Brian, and like Al and like Hart and Greg. We're all tinkers, but I love putting stuff together. I probably would be... I would probably love putting a drone together. I don't know how much I'd want to fly. I'd probably be more fun to me to put something together and make it fly and then move on to the next project. Hmm. And get you a Tyro 119. I know. That's what that's what people keep telling me, and I'm, I might have to go that route, actually. Is that the one? First go ahead. I built one. That was the, I learned, that's the first thing I built before I even knew how to fly. I just built it, and it sat on the shelf for like a year. Well, I watch videos. <laughs> it sounds so, like so my Greg, airplanes. Greg's got a lot of gear in the back wall, so I have the same thing. Only it's on the wall; you can't see in front of me. And and it's so when I first started, somewhere in my head, maybe because I'm a skin flint, it was, I'm going to buy a drone. I'm going to fly it for about thirty seconds and destroy it, <laughs> and then I'm going to look at the remains on the ground. Like I just lost the test. So that's the way I feel. Go, and I'll be like, oh, it's broken. Hey, we got to fix it. I know, right? Oh, right. So that's, a vicious, know. Like, that's a vicious cycle I don't want to get into. I know. You want to look at my bench? Look at yeah. this <laughs> ugly thing. I don't expect so the, you get it so to focus. Cool <laughs> if, you, if you start building your own, and I'm not going to use the word if. Instead, I'm going to use the word when. <laughs> when you, <practice>, <laughs> you are prepared for to fix it, to come back. Right, right. I agree. I agree. It's going to be when, not if. A, a lot of people will just whip their credit card out and buy a whole new one, and the only thing that was missing was three bolts. <laughs> or some right. wire. Oh, the wire came off, which is happening. I'll find, that, I'll find yeah. out how many bolts was just missing because I'm one of them. Credit card type dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saving it for winter time when it's snowing. I ain't got nothing else to do. Hey, if, if, I, I'll you. You don't ski. I'll come over and ski with you, man. I <laughs> love skiing. I do yeah. snowboard. Oh yeah, I could board for sure. Hey, yeah. so if uh, we we can and something to be said about that. Kelly even mentioned to me this year and a couple other folks. He might and I don't want this to be an official thing or anything, but he briefly talk maybe doing spin up every other year and maybe a spin down every other year so they will kind of you know break it up a little bit and um you know sean oliver sean oz world of oz <laughs> he said that he would host it in dylan again anytime anybody wanted to come and I'm, I'm willing to go back there any day i would take my wife with me next time that, that place is beautiful I mean, love that place. I mean, you get to the summit. My favorite place is Copper in Arapaho. For we sure. got Brecken, that little town of Breckenridge. I hit, Sean took us there, and we did a couple. Of that that's a cool little town. It wasn't. Yeah, it's got it, it wasn't packed with all the people from during the winter time. You know, with all the snow and everything. But we were there. <clears throat> when were we there, Greg? I think. And was it in October or something like that? September, I think. Mm. Mm -hmm. Hey, that first couple of days it was cool but that ride home <laughs> I bet you froze. <laughs> yeah it was it did was you, still it. Greg did you ride your Harley up there he yeah. did dang he did. dude that's it, what I it was it was nice weather when he arrived uh -huh. um, and then it did change a couple of days in after it was over with it was cooler oh yeah hey I made it down that mountain it was uh it was a uh, Wendy's at the bottom of it. I, I hung out in there for about an hour, drinking hot chocolate and just <laughs> warming up. <laughs> well, I only had like a forty-five minute trip left. Uh, half hours left. Just to get home. In the French fries. <laughs> yeah. Did you see what Michael said? Uh, Fly Zone Drone said, "You better lock your door, man. He's coming to get your gear." <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, just remember he was in the military, Mike. So yeah, yeah, you might. Want he to knows play. how to use his weapons. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, he, and he's got the sky deal too. So he's got hey, eyes on you, man. Hey, I wanna I wanna throw a plug out there before we get too far. We're almost done with the show, but Ray Kelly just plugged it himself in the chat. We got South. <laughs> The South Florida drone meetup coming up April 2nd at Jensen Beach, Florida. And um, if you're going, if you want to go, start figuring out where you're going to stay. Get you a hotel book because it's going to be a great weekend. We did the first one this past year. It was a blast. It was a huge success. And I think the next one's going to be even better. Hey, uh, Brad, why don't we uh, go on down there with our jet skis, man? Hey. I think I'll tow my jet ski down there uh, cool. and have a good time yeah, now how can you fly into that place now what is it you could west fort palm Lauder, beach fort lauderdale or west palm, palm beach yeah, oh, palm, yeah. Palm, beach. palm beach palm will beach. do it too i've yeah. flown in palm beach to to for that area it there's a lot around. of airports around there yeah which one is closest to it palm yes. beach palm beaches palm beach. yeah you're 30 minute drive um so yeah that's what i would do um, I'm going to book a place uh, uh, over in West Palm Beach. Actually, I guess it's West Palm Beach, right by Peanut Island. Yeah, we got it. So I brought that up for you, Brian. You need to be there. And Greg, you need to be there too, but I know you're you're already talking about being there. Yeah, yeah it's, I, it's, I'm the, the ignorant one. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I just had to like work. <laughs> Greg, Greg, you're talking too fast. You froze. <laughs> oh, it was Brian. It was Brian. I mean, Brian, yeah. Brian. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey. you, you overrun the buffer, Brian. <laughs> you were saying, to, oh, man, you're all out. I, I'm almost all out. I know. That's my, this is my second one, man. I'm not putting another a refill well, on this. So the original was a glass of wine, but then the gin and tonic fairies came and blessed oh, me. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, you can see here, uh, Ray Kelly, thanks for putting that in there, says the West Palm Beach is the closest airport, Greg. Mm -hmm. West West Palm Beach? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, and, see, hey, and, and, and the code for the airport is PBI, by the way. P, P? wait, wait, wait. P is in Paul, B is in Bravo, I is in Indigo. Yep, you got it. P B I. Yep. West Palm Beach, right? Hey, so um, we're right at the eight o'clock hour. Just calling it out. Um, that's okay. been a great show. I don't know if we want to talk about anything else. I know we some folks will probably be leaving us. We we've already lost a couple. Ken Herring's show starts right now. So, okay. Uh, but I, um, we yeah. So I have I have to leave. I have to go pick up my cat from the taxidermist. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Are you doing the dead cat uh, frame? Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like it's like Warren Rogers, you know, horse. Hey, you want something to eat? He's like, no, I'm stuffed. So, right. Anyway. Okay. Thanks for everybody. Appreciate yeah. it, Brian. Thanks for hanging out with us, man. Yep. Thanks, Greg. Right, we'll Greg chat for tomorrow. being in the house. Hey, yeah. thanks for the invite, Al. You're welcome. You're welcome, hey, guys. I'm down to do the, uh, what are you going to call it? The uh, South Florida drone meetup? No, no, no. The addiction meeting. Oh, the. Uh, <laughs> oh, the <laughs> FPV meeting. Yeah. <laughs> come up with a good name for it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Brad, if you want to come up and fly, we're here. Well, well we're just okay. Here. We're not allowed yeah. anywhere else by law, probably. Absolutely. Yeah. I know where you live, so. All right. <laughs> good night, guys. Good night. You should be. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for everybody. Thanks for everybody yeah. showed up in the chat. We appreciate y'all's support. All right, guys. Thanks, right, everyone. All right.